Is that fire? Don't it hurt? It is fire, and it will most certainly hurt. Hurt you. Hello everyone, Murray the Pie Man here for something a bit different. Yes, today I am going to be covering uh, Ungulate Beast Beat 'em Up, Them's Fighting Herds. So yeah, this game's a bit different to what I quite often cover. Uh, you know, normally also I do just a narration straight over playing, but it doesn't really work for fighting games. Now, I think first I'll cover my history with fighting games. Um, largely I'm of the generation that started off in Street Fighter 2 in the original Mortal Kombat, so it's not that I'm a, a slouch at fighting games. What I'd argue is that uh, the nearly 30 years that have, not quite, maybe 25 years that have passed since those, um, have definitely dulled my reflexes um, and I do find modern fighting games a bit intimidating um, so that you know you're when you're sitting is he just a noob at fighting or is he um, something else this, this is kind of getting you where I am so this game is a bit interesting now um, I actually picked this up it was um, I was intrigued by it um, from a video that uh, Outside Xbox did it was Outside Xbox or Outside Extra and uh, I, I was just intrigued so I actually picked this up it was um, an interdeveloped game now interestingly this is one of the interesting parts of the game is it actually uh, has a, a, an odd origin story so this started life if you can't tell from the art style and the look and feel of the thing this started life as a My Little Pony themed beat em up game called My Little Pony Fighting is Magic um, now what basically happened, it was a, a group of effectively bronies, um, and don't judge bronies, I mean, you know, we've all got weird fandoms, fandoms are fandom, um, like people enjoy things. So they decided they wanted to create a beat-em-up uh, based on My Little Pony, and they had plans, they were building, it was going to be free access to avoid copyright things. Uh, now the problem is Hasbro got wind of it and basically said no. Now what happened next was some rather nice internet being decent for once. Uh, events and basically were got out that they were now stuck having to file the serial numbers off this thing to try and make it something less copyright infringing um, and quite a few people got involved one of whom was Lauren Faust I think it's Lauren Faust or Lauren Faust who writes My Little Pony and she thought that was a bit of a shame that this fan project was cancelled but obviously she's not going to say to Hasbro you know it's a her employer and they do have the right to protect their IP. So what she instead was said, how about I develop backstories and characters for uh, your existing assets and that way um, you can still produce a game and indeed other things some people came in and helped donate a game engine and the game is now on sale on Steam um, and I found it quite good. It's, um, uh, it's maybe not the most, well I don't know, when I say it's not the most complex, I'm a button masher and I button mash all these fights that you'll see recorded here are the game being played on easy level. But and so I'm kind of mashing buttons at it. Um, but apparently there are some quite advanced techniques for it. And uh, it, it does ha definitely have its following. It does have online play. I think one of its big sufferings actually at the moment is I don't believe it's available on many consoles. And I've always found beat-em-ups work best on console. And again, this is my age showing, but to me beat-em-ups work best when you're sitting next to the person because there's nothing more fun than having a beat-em-up experience where you can shout at the person or mock each other or give each other encouragement um, as you're playing but overall I found it quite an enjoyable game now part of why I put this on as well it's got technically a festive link very technically but also because my daughter thoroughly enjoys the game and I thought I would um, let my kids at least do some videos for stuff my kids like so uh, uh, she has had a lot of love and she's probably played more hours of this she's actually been playing the online part which I've not gone near um, and she's been reading a lot of the wikis so uh, and instantly if you're wondering I did say it was an ungulate based Hope I pronounce it right. Ungulate based beat em up. Ungulate basically means four legged mammal. So uh, it's, it's a beat em up there. Now, as well as writing characters and bios and giving some basic designs, they also came up with a story. Now, this is based, I think, on what some of the story of the beat em up would be. So there is a story mode, and in fact, uh, we will sort of see some of that later in this video. The story mode has a lovely pixel art style, but overall, I found it quite an enjoyable game. I think it's a nice way to distract your thumbs. It's got a the only, about the only problem is that it does name the buttons different from the kind of Xbox controller I've got plugged in, and so I do sometimes find it confusing when it says press button A and it's a different colour and letter to the button that I'm pressing on my pad. But 
that's me. So I did say this thing is a story, so let's now go and have a look at what the story of this game actually is. So that's the story. Um, I do apologise for not reading out the dialogue I normally would, but uh, basically I'm looking at this on a tiny screen, a peculiarity of Windows Movie Maker. Uh, probably a sign that I should try to find some better software really. Um, and so as a result I can't actually make out the text here, not with my old eyes, so I'm afraid there will be a large period of silence where dialogue's happening or I possibly will speak over it at times when we do go through the story mode. Um, but um, that's, that's just a, a sad part and hopefully it won't affect your enjoyment of this video. So onto the characters. Now one of the things that they do, again there's only six characters in the game, but they have actually tried to make them quite different uh, and you can match. So we're going to look at all the characters in the game now. Now one of the things they did throw in is the characters do have custom palettes, um, which we will look through a bit. So um, it allowed fans and uh, people to contribute palettes to the game to get different colours of the characters um, and do some quite fun in jokes with things in them. Um, so the first character we're going to look at is Chianhua, uh, I believe is the pronunciation, and I do apologise. Now, I can't remember, my daughter does keep telling me uh, she is some sort of mythical Chinese dragon horse thing before you say, how come there's a dragon there? Now, you might have seen, as we're going through some of the palettes, there was one very much like the Jurassic Park raptors. Um, I think as we come on to another one, there's a Rapidash from Pokemon there, and there's probably a lot of others which I've not quite made out um, just from this, but it is part of the fun of these um, palette things. They do come up with, they allow a lot of... Uh, jokes from people and uh, it's nice that they include that as a community thing 
um, just to allow people to take a bit of ownership but also some fun contribution to the game. I don't actually know the process of how people contribute this but they are there so um, and again there's some jokes here there are things like, I think the raptor is called clever girl for example uh, which is quite fun. Now Qianhua and again I do apologize if I'm torturing the pronunciation. So you might think, um, as a kind of dragon creature, that she'd be some sort of distance, you know, with fire breath and that sort of thing, but they've actually made her an up-close fighter. What her specialty is, is very much to do with speed and um, kind of, it is getting up close, it is sort of doing all this close-up fighting, but it's also the fact that she can fly, and so it's quite often the airborne attacks, it's juggling and that sort of thing. Uh, but she is a very fast, a lot, her special moves are very much sort of um, spinning, fire, you know, kind of spinning fire kick kind of things, um, which work quite well and I, th I find her quite a, a fun character to play. I don't use, again, I probably don't use um, the, the abilities nearly as much as they should. Uh, the character background, so with her, she's part, I've not run into her in the story, again, I've only got a certain point in the story, I'm not going to show you the whole thing, but she is a member of a kind of a royal guard, so she's very much experienced. The idea being from these, the champions are picked from each group, and uh, you can see her flying a bit there, and they'll um and they, you know they're kind of going to group together one of the things that you do get quite a lot from her dialogue in the game and in fighting particularly from is that she does seem to be mentoring a bit she seems to be possibly the most experienced and offering some uh, mentorship sides to it which i think is quite neat um now character her she originally i believe was going to be rainbow dash and this is one of the things i like because it's not just my little pony with the serial numbers um filed off uh, they have actually tweaked the character, so unlike Rainbow Dash, she isn't um, as um, kind of uh, direct and, um, you know, Rainbow Dash is very much a, a kind of instinctive, fast-moving character, you know, very much about speed and that sort of thing. And while she's got the flight and obviously what we're doing, the close-up attacks of the Rainbow Dash character, they kept very much that. The personality wise is much more steady and wise. Now one of the things I did mention was magic. You might notice there's a little, there's several meters, one of them across the bottom is a build up for a special attack. I don't demonstrate them all I'm afraid, uh, but the other one is a magic meter and different characters work magic different ways. This is one of the things, that I, while it's only got six characters, they are quite distinctive. Um, now Janhua's regenerates over time but she uses up magic flying, um, which is quite a neat way to kind of limit it. And indeed it was part of it to make sure you can't corner people and spam things. You'll actually notice she starts off with no magic but as she fights it builds so that's one of the ways. Now not, magic doesn't function the same for every character but uh, again it's uh, it's one of those things that they tweaked in so you might find magic works a bit differently depending on who you're using and uh, how it works so, and, and it's one of those nice features of the game. So yeah and again like I say not Rainbow Dash that's Chuan Ha. Chuan Ha. My pronunciations are terrible I do apologise. Like a moth to the flame, Tianwa wins. Now, next up, we have Oleander. Uh, now, I do joke a bit. She is the most My Little Pony of the characters in this, being a, an actual unicorn. Um, I have joked occasionally. She's um, Twilight Sparkle in her goth phase. Uh, now, it's not quite that, but you could see, obviously, a lot of the palettes do have My Little Pony references. I think there is actually a Star Trek one in hers as well, somewhere. Um, but it's just, again, that's people... Uh, having some fun with the the character models and the the various uh, elements of uh, your elements of the game i think that, that might be meant to be a star trek one again sadly i'm seeing this on a small screen so i can't work out all of these things i'm afraid um so yeah she's a kind of um combination she can do up close but she does also have some ranged attacks um like i say uh, the joke is twilight sparkle in her goth phase um so, as you can tell from what I said, yes, she was going to be, you know, she was the character I think was going to be Twilight Sparkle, but again, they've rewritten it. She does still have a lot of the Twilight Sparkle elements, uh, not just being a unicorn, um, she does use magic. What they've actually done as a bit of a change is that she um, she's using dark magic. The idea is that with her, you might have heard when she did her intro, if I wasn't talking over it, um, that uh, there's sometimes this male voice that comes in. So that's actually the book that's floating next to her. The idea is she has been shunned by other unicorns because she's trying to use dark magic. Now they, they just think it's a, a totally thing you don't use, but she thinks it can be controlled. Now that book is a evil book of dark magic with a demon in it called Fred. 
and uh, he does chime in as well. It does make the fights quite fun, and indeed, kind of the uh, the bits where the characters challenge each other. Um, quite a good laugh. Again, that's one of the things that's fairly common in modern fighting games. But there are sometimes bits where they kind of call and uh, you know the, the both the winning and uh, the the startup sort of bits of dialogue. Um, are keyed depending on which characters you're fighting. It's not always, it's not 100% and there are a number of them, but it's game one of those nice touches. Something, I suppose as something as an older fighter game player, um, we didn't really get in the old ones. Characters, there, I think yeah, in the original Street Fighter 2, the only person who did anything remotely when they started was M. Bison, so there is that. But character-wise, what she does is she's got a kind of driven thing, like she, she does you know, very much put a thing of responsibility on her. Again, that's very Twilight Sparkle. But there is also also this hint that she might be being corrupted by her evil dark magic book and that that might be uh, fueling some questionable decisions um, apparently if you do get far enough in the single player mode which apparently is unfinished uh, it's not as in broken it's as in they're just developing parts of it uh, you do get up to a point where you fight her but basically fred will win the fight now one of the things i did talk about magic being different her magic doesn't charge normally what you might have noticed during the fight is every so often she appears to stop and read that isn't just her getting bored of the fight and deciding to have a, a couple of chapters of the book in. The idea is that uh, she has to absorb her magic from the book. So if you want to do magic based attacks, you have to actually catch a moment when the character, your opponent will be recovering and quickly read a bit. So again, it's these things that makes the characters different. It gives them different challenges and different ways of operating. And that, for the small number of characters, that's something I really appreciate from this game. Next up we have Arizona. Now Arizona is a cow, you might have noticed, and as a result we will get a few uh, bovine based jokes. I think that colour scheme that just passed there is the laughing cow mascot from the cheese. Um, but there are quite a few things. So she's very much a cow, very much a, a simple prairie girl, and indeed she's actually the character who we focus on. I believe the gist of it is that the um, single player story campaign would focus on different characters as it went through, but you start off as Arizona, so uh, always a character worth getting to know. Now, if you hadn't guessed from personality-wise... Sure, nice. well, not personality so much, but from the look and feel, Arizona was very much based on Applejack. Um, they took very much the farm girl on the difference is she's a, a cow, but from a race of almost nomadic uh, sort of cow bison people. Um, that's sort of her, her part of Aphonian, I believe, is the, the name of the fictional world. And she is picked as their champion, uh, although quite young. You know, her parents are, are initially a bit worried about sending her out on this. Um, so again, while she does have a lot of the Applejack personality, um, she's actually got hints of uh, what you'd probably call Rainbow Dash in there, because she does have that uh, kind of uh, slightly young, it's not more naivety, but you know, she's a bit direct, she's a bit more direct, so she's... Uh, maybe lacking a bit of wisdom, but uh, a good fun character um, to play, and uh, yeah, quite a, a good starting character. I think she's one that you can kind of get behind, and they do write quite well. Interestingly, she's actually voiced by the voice artist who voices Twilight Sparkle, and my daughter tells me this is because, well, not because, but one of the things is the actress who um, voices Twilight Sparkle initially auditioned or initially wanted to be Applejack, so it's kind of a way of her to get somewhere in there, and again, that is the tie-in with some of the people involved in My Little Pony sort of doing this, but at the same time making sure it remains something separate. And again, that's part of it, you know, mixing up of the personalities, rewriting the characters, has made it, well, you can definitely see where the My Little Pony element starts. Uh, it's not just, um, you know, a, a sort of weird wish.com knockoff of My Little Pony. Now, fighting-wise, her character's kind of interesting. It's, again, very close combat. Now, she does have a couple of things. She's got some foot stomps, which can kind of disrupt the character. And again, there's quite a lot of horn-based stuff, although she does also kick, um, which is quite fun. Now, one of the other things she has is you might have seen her use a lasso. Now, that's actually also what builds up her magic. Uh, she doesn't have her magic doesn't appear initially. It doesn't build. What she does instead is she uses her lasso, and every time she lassoes someone, uh, she builds up magic. She can also do some throws with it, but the trick that they've put in to stop it being an absolute spammy weapon is that you have to actually have them at a pretty, you know, at a certain, not pixel perfect, but 
a fairly exact distance. So yeah, overall, she's quite a good character to start with because she does. Uh, she's quite simple, and again, I can button mash my way through quite a lot with her. Next up we have Paprika, who I believe is an alpaca, not a llama, um, although I could be hard pressed to find out which one's which. I think one of the costumes here is an Emperor's New Groove uh, reference, uh, not, it's not actually one I've seen, but it is well loved by some people, and again, showing that kind of fan interaction. Um, so she's uh, sort of one of the stranger characters in the game, as you might have seen in some of the previous fights in the video. So character wise, I believe she was brought in, you know, she's obviously based on Pinkie Pie, um, kind of the sort of zany craziness uh, from the My Little Pony series. Um, now, they've actually very much varied the fighting. You can see that she is rather weird. Some of her moves involve giving away what looks like a free t-shirt. Um, her fur is constantly going off and she can actually teleport, um, all of which brings quite a lot of fun to the character. Um, and but she's also completely non-verbal. She makes just weird noises instead, which does make the the start of fight sort of things um, quite entertaining. Um, because uh, yeah, it's, it's quite often someone will shout abuse her and she'll just respond with squeaks or um, coos. Um, and indeed, there is an impression given in the game's literature that she might actually just be trying to hug people into oblivion. Uh, apparently, when she appears in the story, it's her family has actually more or less abandoned her and she's stalking you through the fog in some sort of slightly insane but also spooky way, um, which which is quite fun. Um, now, the way her character kind of fights, again, uh, there, one of the things that actually got me is there aren't too many ranged attackers. Uh, you might have noticed um, the Oleander there, she um, can fire a fireball, but there are even limits put on that, even if you've got a full store of magic, actually spamming the fireballs, and it's been set up so it's quite tricky to spam the same fireball over and over again, which is good. I like that sort of thing uh, that's put into it. As I say, um, Paprika's very much on teleports, but she does quite a lot of kind of thump moves and very quick, you know, there's fluffy sort of jumps and that sort of thing. She can teleport, you might have seen her do a kind of teleport where she slams down on top of them. Um, and that's kind of one of her main features. She can also just teleport to your kind of zoom out the screen and zoom in the other side and that, that sort of idea. Um, one of the interesting things is where her magic is. You might notice it's charged up, but her magic, one of the main things when you press the magic button on the controller, is uh, she'll hurl fruit or occasionally pot plants at the opponents. Now she can actually regenerate health by eating that fruit when it lands on the ground, um, but she can only regenerate magic if the opponent eats it, so it's, it's a bit of an odd feature, but it does make her magic part quite interesting, and again, how they're keeping all these characters different, which is a, a good part of the game. Rika wins. Next up we have Pom, who is a sheep, a rather nervous sheep. Um, again, one of the this costumes there was, I believe, uh, I want to say Mareep from Pokemon. Again, uh, again, I was very much Generation 1 Pokemon, and anything I know beyond Generation 1 is large because my kids have been trying to thump it into my thick skull, or I've been doing Pokemon Go. But uh, yeah, so they've made her kind of this nervous sheep. She actually has a very interesting fighting technique, which hopefully we'll see just shortly. Once I've finished admiring all the different looks, worth people being acknowledged for that. Please, no! I'm afraid of the dark! Oh, can I keep her Ollie? No! And don't call me Ollie! Round one. Fight! So, one of the interesting things with her, uh, again, it's very much in the personality, is they very much put her like she doesn't want to be there. I don't quite know why she's fighting. Again, I've not looked into the story that much. But the way she actually fights, as well as kind of standard button mashes, although she does have a few moves, she can float, actually, uh, and one of the ones you saw there, she can kind of quickly change sides, and that can also allow her to avoid projectiles. But her main combat, and how her magic actually works, is she summons dogs. So she's a sheep with a herd of dogs. Um, if that kind of makes sense. Um, and basically her magic goes down as she summons dogs and it 
reappears when she unsummons said doctor if they do their attack. So once the doctors have done an attack, they'll vanish off screen and the magic will appear. What this could actually mean is I've played a few times against the computer and ended up with four or five, you know, at least four dogs kind of roaming about the screen attacking me and it can actually get quite, you can be quite overwhelmed. She's definitely one of the harder characters to master, I think, because it is such a different technique for a fighting game. I mean, I'm butting mashing here on the easy setting, so I say, oh, she's difficult to master, you're going, you're doing okay. I hope if anyone who knows fighting games is watching, work, now he isn't. Banish fear if you hope to embrace victory. Really? Now that's one of the things I like. There is definitely a feel that, um, particularly with Pom, I mean, it comes up with all of them. You know, you do get to, with Chan Hua's, um, you know, some of the times when they're low on health, good, now again, or that sort of thing when they do moves. Uh, there's very much a feel with both the, you know, with some of the conversation, you know, the pre match conversations, uh, that. Um, she's trying to train Pom, you know, perhaps uh, trying to help her out a bit, and so I'd have been interested to see a bit more of that relationship and how that builds up, so I'm finding that quite entertaining. Um, but yeah, obviously character-wise, she is based on Fluttershy, um, who maybe have possibly they are using the floating that she does as a limit for Fluttershy's occasional ability to fly in the series, and instead Fluttershy, I believe, would be using various woodland animals that she would summon um, to her aid. Now, one of the interesting things, the predators are the things they're fighting, but apparently domestic dogs don't count. Um, I suppose they are very cute, so there is that. But yeah, she's actually, again, one I, I struggle with. I'm not very good when I'm using Pom. Um, but I, I, you know, I am, um, I, I, do, I do think it's very interesting to have done something that different with a character. Um, and yeah, again, personality-wise, she's probably the one closest to her My Little Pony uh, personality, but they have made her you know, very much, it's not just, ni you know, they've, they've kind of dialed it up to 11 on that, so that's quite fun. And last, but of course by no means least, lest I get criticised, we have Velvet. Um, now Velvet is a reindeer. Look what Christmas references. I'm still seasonal if I get this video done in time. Um, and again, there are various references throughout that. I don't know exactly what they are. Again, sadly, I'm trying to make this out on a very small screen, which I can't size up. Um, but needless to say, I'm sure there are some of you watching that are going, ha ah, ha ha, there's a, a joke there. Um, I hope you are. So Velvet is very much the ranged attacker. Um, well, most of them have been up close. Velvet is actually a character where it pays to actually keep keep your opponent in range, and a lot of her moves are built to clear the opponents. Now she can actually fire fireballs without using up her magic. Um, just as a special, she fires these ice shards. But what's interesting is the way they work. They actually, if you keep an eye out for them, they kind of hang in the air for a second before firing. Now you might find that frustrating, but actually when you use it properly, they can actually, you can effectively set one of them up and then go and do a few moves and it kind of builds a combo and I've found that quite good. Again, she's an, a, a bit interesting. She does have a bit of a freeze ability as well because she's using ice um, as a lot of her power. But uh, yeah, she's very much, um, yeah, there's one of the ice projectiles there. Yeah, very much the, the fighting style you meant to use with her is attack, quickly and then clear some space uh, between her you and the opponent <coughs> pardon character wise she is character wise she's based on rarity from the series and what they've done rarity was well spoken and um, very, uh, in, very obsessed with her appearance. They've kind of dialed that up and put in a lot of vanity. I mean, she's um, a character who does sound quite annoying, and you do get impressions that, in particular, Oleander doesn't like her. Um, which again, you just pick up from those initial intro things, and it's quite fun that they've got those bits of personality thrown into the characters. Wins. 
so now I'm going to take a look at the story. I've hopefully not cut this so it's absolutely incoherent, um, but hopefully we can get bits and bobs and enough of the story that you get an idea of what the story mode looks like. And that's very much our setup for the game, and that's the style in which most of the story goes. They went for this um, old Zelda game pixel art style, which I kind of love. Um, I think it gives it a real charm and makes it different. One of the things it also means is that you aren't, unlike say something like a subspace emissary from Smash, you aren't always trying to play an adventure game with beat em up interface. It allows a certain amount of mixing up. Now, this sort of appearance is also used in the multiplayer lobbies, so the idea is uh, one of the things you might see as we go through this is the character will change appearance, you can get costume pieces. And in the multiplayer version of the game, when you go into the lobbies to pick fights, or there's also things called salt mine runs, which I'm not too familiar with, um, when you do these things, you can, uh, you, it's all presented in this way, but you can have the characters, for all that's just the six characters, you can have them being your avatars. Now, one of the things they threw in was they also used this as kind of an extra tutorial, uh, which has its goods and bad points. So you'll find these crystals along the way and they'll take you to the tutorial section. So for example, the first one's quite easy. It's how to jump and you can see there's an instruction in the corner showing you 
how to jump and the different types that you know how to jump this one i found an exercise in frustration that this was how to do a, a kind of super distance jump and the problem is it had to, you had to do two and you were back to the start if you failed so the gist of it is you've got to jump on top of that thing and as you can see i fail the problem is and one of the big a big sin for me you know i don't like you putting platforming into my beat-em-ups into my first person shooters i also beat-em-up controls do not work well for platform i did this a lot before what i think now is coming up the actual successful one you can see how tentatively i'm shifting because the problem is a double tap forward also does a rush and um, a later one i've also cut in here uh, just to kind of show the level this was to do small jumps and this was in a later part you can see what i mean these don't follow straight on and have cut these together um and that's the problem is if you if you fail your small jump you hit those spikes and now you see well it's okay there but uh a bit further along as you can see and this is why i'm being so careful um if you hit any of those you're right back to the start if you fail the short jump and that's yeah you see down there and nope there's no way back so I found these, I've got to admit it, an exercise and absolute frustration. I think I found some of these very annoying and I really do think, it's one of those things that I think they could vastly improve because it is built there as a tutorial, but um, quite often it's really more trouble than it's worth. And it's a lot more, it's, it's one of the things that really does slow down the gameplay because uh, you can find yourself trapped in these kind of effects with platform sections and again it's these things i wish people wouldn't try to platform with beat em up controls and instead would um understand certain limitations that's i think if i'm going to criticize the game this is one of the parts where i would definitely criticize because i found it hugely annoying look at it this way i would you know i would not if i lost all my save games i might just never try the single player again if I knew I had to go through this once more. So in the event again I've cut quite a lot out but you do get to meet characters and have conversations with them which hopefully move the plot along and get you somewhere um, such as this one. observe here plots happening so this is our first look at the predators as they appear in the pixel art style and indeed what proceeds here is kind of a chase into the mines now the mines uh, are worth taking a look at because these seem to be encounter spaces again in the initial part it's mines they do also come in in the multiplayer game as uh, there is a thing called a salt mine run and so you can go through in this one we are chasing the predator and we will eventually have to fight said predator but in the meantime it is running through these pixels again i do like the style uh, the game music is also quite fun i do quite like there's occasionally a wee bits of chip tune to it uh, they they know their audience um which is most uh, their audience uh, uh, they've not aimed at it's not that it's not aimed at a young audience there was nothing abject to my daughter for example who's 12 playing or even my son who's, who's nine I object neither of them playing the game but um 
it is just that sort of thing of yes, they do know that there's there's definitely a, a retro market of people maybe closer, a bit younger than me, hopefully. No, not hopefully, just a bit younger than me playing it. But this is what you get quite often in this. So you, in any of these things, you will get these encounters with predators. Um, but one of the interesting things with these mine encounters is any damage you take stays. You've got to heal in the mine, so you've got to find healing parts. And again, you can also store up magic and supercharge, so you can actually get charged for your specials charged up in the mines so you can actually be going into battles with special charges. So while these are easy to defeat you might have noticed that the other one conveniently in great martial arts terms just lurked behind waiting for you to attack. Um, but one of the issues can be if you take too much damage in these fights and don't find things to help you recover you could find yourself near the end of a mine run facing off against a boss with a massively depleted health bar and I can imagine as you get on with things that's going to become an issue um, but you can see that she does mention things there again plot plot is happening um, and there is a wee instruction here telling you about uh, just coming up about how your health bar will fade over time so it is quite an interesting element that they've put into these kind of uh, mine runs which I think is quite fun So jumping to near the end of the mine, we're coming up to one of two boss fights that it has. The first one is with a variety of predators, and again they say in this one, if you lose the fight it's game over, so this is a bit different from the normal ones you have. Uh, and this is actually you having to fight multiple enemies on the same screen, although there's only one you have to defeat. It's a bit weird, it's almost like something helped out. I do apologise for the loading times, uh, that's my PC, so it's a bigger version of these ones. Uh, they do all have names, I think there's Flopsies and Cuddles and that sort of thing. Yeah, you get a snake back there spitting poison at you. Um, and there's a smaller predator there, so it does make this a bit tougher. I mean, I do have this at its easiest setting, but you can see that we are chipping away the health bar quite well. Not taking too much damage ourselves, so that worked quite well. And they all explode. Because they are a bit weird, they're kind of ghostly shadow predator things. And so from that. I believe we eventually get out of this mine. A few screens left. We've got these bits of green that we're picking up from these little clouds of shadow. And there's a costume piece, so I think I... Oh, that was a, but yeah, I have the costume pieces, that's why she's now looking a bit like Indiana Jones. I could even put a moustache on her, I believe that's what that piece is. So they are having a bit of fun with it. And again, it's nice that you can start customising your characters. And it also gives them a... I mean, again, you pick up salt and salt mines running multiplayers and you can start dressing your character up and making all sorts of uh, alterations to your appearance. But wait. There is another boss fight. You see, they decided. Here's more plot happening. Now, 
This boss fight took me a bit of time to get to grips with, so I have cut quite a lot out of it. Sadly we did have a long loading screen in this one. Um, it does look, it starts off looking like a normal boss fight uh, that you'd have. But wait, he's jumped off to the back and like I say, it took me a while to work out the procedures here. So first time round, at least the first time, I got beaten and you get your game over. But obviously you get to retry. That took you back into the mines, you actually had to finish off the mines again. And the trick to this one is you have to dodge the poison attacks, which is easier said than done. And then it's uh, one of the things I found this you know, for all this it's still sitting on the easy setting, it's not actually, I mean, I, maybe I'm just not great at these, but I found it quite hard to avoid for all that, again, you're not taking much damage, but they also did warn you, uh, because at a certain point, you get past here, and you think you've avoided all of that, but now that's jumped onto the next screen, and they now have a couple of new attacks, which involve again the poison spitting, which you just have to avoid. And that tail clipping one, which you've got to keep jumping over, that's the one that keeps catching out. And then the last one, and this is the really tricky part, is the more tail clipping that you keep missing. Um, I believe my kids were actually better at this. The last one is that, and it's the fact that they're very, it's once it's bit, that's where you get to actually do your damage. And so that's very much a rinse repeat, and this is dodge all the attacks until the opportunity presents itself. Um, not the easiest thing to do. So you could watch me make this a lot harder than it needs to be uh, for the next few minutes. And yes, after all that, you still have to then fight it as a conventional boss, so they were not making life easy in this. Um, fortunately, it is like a lot of the other characters, that, you know, the other predators you fight here, they have actually um, toned that, you know, once you actually, when your hits make contact, they do knock a lot of the health bar out, so it is something you can defeat. Uh, well, it took me longer than I would have thought and you do get a bit of regeneration in between rounds so it does still break into having to use the, the fighting engine a bit more but I, th I like what they do with this, I like the fact they have kind of tried to find ways to make it, uh, make it different and uh, make things work a bit better so having defeated a super predator Presumably. We will now, it's daylight and we are going to Rain City. Again, look, it's festive, it's Christmassy. See, I'm in project now. The basic gist of this is our companion told us how to get in. We had to go to get our sandwich. There's bits of you know, Zelda like puzzle solving how to do here. And we then got to get these guards to open the gates. Uh, but being reindeer, the reindeer are quite snooty. Apparently, that's a reindeer thing. 
um, but you have some milk. They don't mention where the cow got the milk, but I think not uh, Arizona. It was one of the older cows gave you some milk. They don't go into too much how the how the cow got the milk, and that's that's probably for the best. But again, there's there's humour. They've got quite a fun fun sense in the game. I think the dialogue is entertaining. Having kind of uh, Arizona's reactions to everything going on is also quite fun. Even though the mysterious have gone from desert plains to winter city, but uh, we try not to think about that. And yes, one of the things with the the rain city reindeer is the not reindeers. I get a lot of trouble for that as they use these winter sprites for a lot of things. So. I get to go into the city and this is now going in, you're trying to find the museum so you're going to go and talk to people. I've cut a bit ahead because there's some winter sprites and they, they speak in that kind of weird um, runic but all of a sudden they run away because who should this be but a whole lot of sheepdogs and a mysterious sheep who we will presumably later find out is Pom. Um, and again nice way to kind of introduce some of the characters there and that you are all coming together in a city um, and you get to do get these views. So there is this kind of um, for all that your combat is resolved in a beat-em-up style buy this game and you effectively get a kind of um, top-down-ish I don't know what the description of this is but a Zelda style adventure game bundled in which uh, is neat. I mean it's maybe not as complex as a Zelda style and again here's where I meet uh, I can't remember Jarl Olaf or something you know, he's kind of the, the head reindeer um, here and he seems to quite like you um, once we get to that point he will go up and have a chat with him because naturally we're, we're the sort of person who apparently just walks up to the leader of our town and has a chat but he we talk to him about the predators and he, he takes a look apparently into our soul and gives us a Rambo headband sorry to spoil what's about to happen I thought I'd wear it because I thought, it, I don't know if what you wear actually affects how people react, but you know, I got this little chest and in it was a heroic headband, which I started wearing after that. Now here's another bit, it's just a fun bit of plot here, um, the, the, uh, the Elite Seven I think they're called. Um, and yeah, what this is, you start, you'll talk to this next person. Is it a bit of a dig at My Little Pony fans? Entirely possible. It's um, a lot of fandoms do like these internal digs at each other themselves. But basically, you do have this person going on at length about all the reindeer and their Dasher, Prancer, Donner, Vixen, etc. And how they um, always, one day there's a missing day where they all vanish off to do some secret mission. So you see, I've made a themed Christmas video. Look at me, I've done it. But the idea is that there's this velvet who could be the other one, but there's also this some other bloke with a giant nose who might get the roles and extra reindeer. So I quite like again, just a nice touch of extra dialogue, which I'll let you enjoy.
Anyway, our search takes us to the museum, and after wandering about the museum for a bit, we find these tablets, which are full of clues about stuff which is happening in the plot. But, um, let's see, I'll go let you read this, but, uh, at the end of this, who should come running in? Well, we'll go for that. There's someone there, and who should come in? Who has that supercilious accent? But it is... A reindeer. Why, it's velvet. So, this is kind of your first... Well, we're all what we meant Palm earlier. This is your first proper encounter. And uh, you can kind of see how, how this works out. So, unsurprisingly, uh, this leads to a fight scene. Uh, now, this is actually where I got stuck. Uh, I do know, uh, actually, my son has beaten this part, so the children have already outstripped the face. And again, this looks like it's going to be easy. Um, you do get to beat her quite soundly in the first round. I mean, she barely laid a, an, an antler on me. Um, but, sadly, she then stops playing fair. No, I think I get another round of normal combat. Although, you know, some wins started, but all still going fine. And uh, it's actually a bit later on in the fight when things get. Yeah. So, this is where we then get stuck, is with her doing this uh, pirouetting permanently um, and firing things and laughing at you and this is where I got stuck. Uh, there is a way around it is again like most of the boss fights it's a rinse repeat but overall the story mode is quite fun there's a sense of humour to it there's again they are trying to do some interesting things with the beat em up style um, but try to not always leave you trying to do a safe platform they are trying to make the beat em up bit work and again like the snake boss fight you saw earlier they are and even this one they are trying to make them do more interesting things and I really appreciate that. So I'll give you a wee bit of watching me get beaten up for the next while because apparently that's something we can enjoy.
Now, there is also a training mode. Um, I did mention there's tutorial stuff. I quite like. Look at that, some like a cow um, and some of the insults. Now, the idea is with this, they've made a training mode. Uh, there's lots of, you know, you can jump anywhere, you can actually take instruction at any point you like, but it's all presented by Oleander. And again, that's quite good, giving Oleander the bit of personality. Um, you, know, you can see her there with the reading glasses on, um, some lovely Velvet Idol animation there. And it's just to um, kind of put a bit of, but it does mean that the training thing has a, a bit more sass to it and you do get a bit more of her personality and how she's not just goth phase Twilight Sparkle. Now, once you get onto the actual characters, as you can see here, um, you can look at specific special moves and you, this is again where you do get a lot more of Oleander's personality coming out uh, and it is just a nice touch. It's also nice that you do have this opportunity to practice specials and you can see again I jumped through quite a few of these and this is kind of how I'm going to close out the video um, I think is I'm going to close it out just with Oleander talking about uh, some of the other fighters uh, special moves and how their powers work and so if you don't want to listen to my inane chatter um, you can always just mute it and happily read what's coming up there um, as she comments on her magic, other people's magic, how different creatures work. Um, so yeah, overall what do I think of them's fighting her as well? I like it. Um, it does have its problems. I think probably one of the things that uh, most people pull up on it, and it's sort of a valid criticism, is it does have a very limited roster. Six characters. Uh, if you think the original Street Fighter 2 had what, eight, Mortal Kombat originally had maybe five or six. Um, so on one hand you could say it's got a very, very small uh, character. There is uh, a DLC character called Shanty coming out. Um, although we don't know when. Uh, what I do like, again, because it's a small operation, they are working to their own time scales and it will be ready when it's ready. Um, and indeed, I think most people will quite appreciate a new character appearing. But I'm also glad that what we have, and indeed, you know, because there's apparently more of the story to also continue, and what we have works. I've found the game. I find some of the loading times slow, but that could be to do with my machine. Um, but uh, other than that, everything that's got works. It's not a buggy mess. So that's got that's got an advantage over quite a few AAA titles, if I'm honest. Um, now, like I say, the limited roster is probably its biggest weakness. But in the defence of that, um, I would say yes, it has a limited roster. But on the other hand, all the characters are different. Um, so again. Uh, for, for example, Street Fighter 2. Uh, Street Fighter 2 is pretty good. It did keep a, a fairly solid variety between the characters. On the original, I'm not talking Turbo, Super, EX plus Alpha. Um, but if you think of the original Mortal Kombat, yes, there were different special moves, but actually a lot of the characters fought very similarly. And, you know, there was, like, most of the characters had some form of fireball manoeuvre. Most of the characters had some form of other special and they had the same base move set. So in that respect, if you think of it like a 90s beat em up, it's actually got a lot of variety because there are different ways in which characters fight. So for all that it's got six characters, I like the way it's six different characters. You know, if you choose to main if you choose to put all your focus into say Arizona, you're gonna find playing Palm very difficult and that you can get these differences in playstyles and I think that's really important, particularly for a game produced by a small operation and I really like the, the <laughs> you know, sort of one of the Arizona's kind of foot poundings and I, I, again they've put so much into this um, there's, you know, as well as the you know, just one-on-one -on -one fighting that you can do and the arcade mode which you've seen a lot of my nice stuff played through um, there is also the story mode which they're continuing to work on and the fact that it's a work in progress I don't know how much of it's coming out as paid DLC I've honestly not looked into that but also there's a multiplayer and from what my daughter says again sorry I love <laughs> Oleander's reactions to Paprika um, she is terrified of her and finds her utterly bemusing um, the online community at the moment seem quite nice uh, which is a rarity for the internet and particularly for fighting games Granted, I've not let uh, my daughter on voice chat because I don't want to expose her to that part of the world yet. But uh, the text chat in it, um, me peering over her shoulder like a responsible parent, the text chat part has all seemed very civilised and very reasonable. And I'm actually, I've been very pleased. You know, I've been quite happy to leave her to it so far. Um, and, you know, just 
pop in an occasion to look. Um, she's not been saying much because I did tell her don't interact if you don't have to. That's at the risk of being the modern internet. Although, as a slight thing, I do wonder if the reason why she's not getting abuse is because she might be fighting, everything's fighting under my Steam login. Um, so that could actually be it, that she's not getting the abuse because people don't realise she's a girl. I hope not. I hope it's just that it's a nice community. I'd like there to be something nice in this world. Um, but yeah, so overall, this game is a thumbs up. I think, particularly because it's not too expensive, I can't remember what I spent on this. You get it on the Humble Store, or I believe you can just buy it straight from Steam. Depends on, frankly, who you want to give your money to. Um, presumably they all go into the same place. Um, but yeah, overall, I've found this quite a charming and quite fun. And again, it's quite interesting. They have tried to make the game more than... You'll notice they are all on four legs, and they have tried to make it more headbutts. And you know, for all they're not doing a Tekken-style fighting system where... You know, they've not got hoof one, hoof two, hoof three, hoof four. Um, but they have actually tried to um, make these characters, you know, to distinguish the characters and, you know, to make it something a bit more interesting that you're fighting as four-legged animals rather than, you know, it would be so easy to just make the whole thing, oh, yes, but just before they go into battle, they all rear up on their hind legs and all of a sudden you've got a fairly conventional beat up It's just everyone looks vaguely like a horse. And they didn't do that, so yeah, I think overall this gets kind of a thumbs up for me, and I think if you want to spend a bit of money on it, I reckon you'll you'll get a good few hours of entertainment out of it. Um, yeah, I think, well, I've managed to make a fairly solid video out of it, so there's that, so it's definitely done something that's given my daughter many, many hours of entertainment. So yeah, and from what I've heard from people who, you know, from the things I've read about this as a beat em up, it's easy to pick up, but probably very difficult to master for all is using basically a simple four button system. But again, hopefully less intimidating than it can be for um, someone who's maybe not as used to beat em ups. So all that remains to do is thanks for thanks for uh, giving this your time. It was a long video. It actually took quite a while to make. It required a good chunk of editing. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. If you do, please tell me in the comments. Um, also, please like and subscribe if you like the channel and want to see more of. Well, probably not more of this. Normally I do videos very lazily of actually just recording the narration and then playing the game. And it's something which I'll stick to because it's a lot easier. This is taking a long time to make. Um, so I do hope you like it. If you want to talk to me outside of the YouTube comments section, I am on Twitter at at PyMan70. That's Pi with a capital P, Man with a capital M, and 70 as in the number 70. Um, and again, any feedback you want to give me on that is always appreciated. So uh, thanks again for watching watching and until the next time the next video um, in this happy new year i suppose i should have started with a happy new year did i it's been so long since i started doing this narration but uh i think uh if you hope hope everyone's going to have a good better 2021 than 2020 i'll tell you that um but uh hopefully i will be producing more videos again i don't normally do animal themed beat-em-ups normally uh, at the moment i'm generally playing through uh, Wing Commander 3 and I'm also going through Dark Forces and I'm going to try and maintain those. Um, I've got one Wing Commander video in the can and I might have a Dark Raft. I'm going to have to get Dark Forces recorded at some point. But um, hopefully I will keep content coming out on about a monthly basis. That's my goal for the year is to try and get something out once a month roughly. Um, so hopefully see you for the next video but until then, bye for now.